Guys around the world and the great beyond, welcome back to another episode of the Guy Stuff Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Claiborne, joined as always, all the way from the other side of the planet, Jonathan SB joins me, and we are joined today by a very, very special friend. In fact, I, I, might, I, feel, like, I feel like we are out of, out of his league, John. I feel like we are out of George's league. Everybody that comes on, we're out of their league. I mean, like, we could have, like, the, the garbage man not come wrong. on, and they'd be like, you know what? We out your league. <laughs> but definitely in this case, he is definitely out of our league. And so we, we thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you having me, and that is absolutely not true at all. It's, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here, guys. He said it, guys. You heard it. <laughs> Just kidding. We got street cred now. We got street cred. Is it? It's the street cred. If you if you're if you're watching this online, you'll see this. If you're not, we, we encourage you to, to to jump on the YouTube channel and check it out. Our friend George Johnson uh, is with us today. He is a filmmaker, a writer, director all those things and uh he's made some some films you may have seen through the years uh george tell them a little bit about some of your films and we'll we'll go talk about one of them specifically today but give them a little bit of your background sure um well as far as feature films go uh dreamer spelled backwards for you today is uh (laughs) that was actually uh, our first film my first film um i grew up playing around with video cameras actually started I think I was five when I got my first 16 millimeter or eight millimeter film camera. Eight mil. I was always making film. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now I was poor. I couldn't afford film, but we just winded <laughs> up to make it, make little imaginary movies. Um, but I always dreamed about making a movie, and I thought maybe someday. This was before YouTube. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if somebody shot a movie on a video camera? Hmm. This was back in the 90s. And so started working on the script for this really weird movie, Dreamer. <clears throat> and oh, that's then, cool got a couple buddies together and we did it and shot it and put it in theaters uh with the opening night the world premiere was on uh, new year's eve 2004 Ooh. and it was uh, yeah about i think it was over 600 people came it was uh the the biggest release ever in that theater's history which was really cool wow. um, after that homeless for the holidays uh was the second film and that one was really cool we kind of took things up a notch um, used a video camera, but it was a red, not a Ooh. homemade video camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little Canon. Um, so that was great. Met some amazing people on that one. Um, mm. still friends to this day. And then, you know, we've done several others. Um, we uh, made an attempt at doing a film. I have a YouTube channel, movie family, where it's just all of our, my kids and everything like to make their own little stop action movies and they direct things. And we were going to make a movie as a family about 10 years ago called super kids and it was a blast. We had a lot of fun playing with it, but unfortunately never got that one off the ground. Um, and then of course behind me, uh, the most recently would be thy neighbor, which is, uh, something a little different, more of a guy stuff. It is man. Like definitely like a lot of the, like, yeah. And, and and we're going to talk about that in a minute, that movie in a minute. Cause there's some, there's some really good stuff in there that I really want to really want to get to and, and talk about, but uh, just a couple things just for those that are not watching on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, George going to flex on us. He, he's like, hold on. I got to set up some things. Look in the back. He got some, his Emmys, all just laid up in there. He just flexing on it hard, man. I was like, wow, George, you, you got I'm, I'm just trying, I'm just those trying to not- be like the cool kids. This, <laughs> this is what everybody else does. <laughs> Uh, we can they can all go <laughs> those are not participation trophies, no guys. they're not <laughs> like those are earned yeah. <laughs> so, what what are those couple like what did what did you win uh, what, what, what uh came and speak uh what are those emmys for like what did you win those for specifically the um this one was for a music video uh that you do the band the guess who kind of an yeah. american legend band american woman like these eyes um i directed a music video for them good stuff and and that was the emmy and then we're up for another emmy actually next month in june which would be really cool can can you say for who can you say for who uh, yeah it's for the trailer for thy neighbor actually oh wow yeah it's a good trailer it is thank you before i even saw the movie i was really happy with the way it came out yeah man that just really good actually probably um Let's uh before we jump into it, we'll, we'll, before we jump into it, we'll show that trailer and and, and see uh, what it kind of looks like because uh, it is legit. 
Hey, what are we gonna do about getting the neighbor into a service? Why is it so important to you? I'm a pastor, and it's a pastor's job to get people into church. You were a pretty angry man. Do you still wrestle with it just, just once in a while? He's reminding me of old Zach, and it scares me. I don't think it's a good idea for you or Alex to go over there when I'm not around, okay? I don't see Alex. He's just here. Don't go to anyone's house without me. I love you. I like the stories of Jesus. He said he loved me. But his people didn't. Oh man, that that was that was the jam. <laughs> that was the jam. That was I wanted to talk to you about in that movie. And then even the trailer, you can see it. So guys, people who haven't seen it can see. Did y'all just pick that cat up, the crazy guy off the street somewhere and put him in there? Because that Joker was creepy. I mean, he was uh, he creepy. <laughs> you are not kidding. <laughs> so here's the story with Dave Payton, our infamous neighbor. Um, we had done some casting. We had done some video auditions, and we mm -hmm. kind of reached out to some actors and things. And we had some of the casting done, and then we held um, a live audition, and we were looking for a few roles, and the neighbor wasn't one of them. Mm. And I, I get to the theater. We usually rent to a movie theater and do it in there just because that's a cool place to audition yeah. for a movie. But, uh, so I'm getting there, and I'm setting everything up, and there's this guy just sitting in the chair watching me the whole time while I'm doing this. And I didn't think much of it. Um, but then I finally get everything set up and there's about 15 minutes before auditions. So I get, you know, go in, sit down, kind of get ready. Some of the other casting people are showing up and sure enough, he stands up and he's first in line. And we're like, Oh, okay. Okay. So he wants to audition for something. So he comes in and says he wants to audition for the neighbor. And I said, Oh man, I'm so sorry. You know, the neighbor's been cast, but, um, you know, there's still a lot of good roles, you know, you've got some sides, and he's like, man, I drove a long way, you know, came from Wisconsin, is, is it okay if I just, if I just give you something? <laughs> oh, you know, of course, man, you, you put a lot of time into your, getting here, so we're like, sure, what, what do you, what do you got? <clears throat> and he did the neighbor, and then walked away, and we all just <laughs> sat there with our jaws hanging on the table, and like, we, we didn't call anybody in for like five minutes, and we're like, what just happened? I was like, <laughs> and he got, and he got the he got the little nub finger too. And I was like I was like everything like everything is creepy about this guy. Like I was like oh, this Joker was like I mean, and there was a, a couple of spots like he was channeling this like Heath Ledger uh, Joker vibe. Like he was licking his lips like, and I was like, oh, this now, dude. Now to be to be fair, to be fair, I've done some research on on Dave. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, and, and just so our guys out there know who have not seen the movie, he's an actor. He's not really that yeah. creepy. He's just really, really he, good he, at his craft. He might be. You don't know the dude. He may <laughs> be I've creepy. I've seen some other you stuff know? because I cross-checked these guys, so I watched <laughs> some of their other material. I'm staying in make-believe world, and I'm thinking he's a creeper. I think he got like 47 dead cats in his backyard. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> John, John thinks actors are the actual people they play. Right. But it's like, who don't make you feel that like, way? Like, exactly. But, but that's good, I guess. Leave my that's delusion good. alone, Anthony. Why are you going to jump on me, yo? Why don't you let me just enjoy movies? Well, here, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Um, so, obviously, we cast him. I had to make a change. We cast him. Um, he came in on, I think, day two we were shooting. He just came in and sat down in a lawn chair because we were shooting an exterior and just watched. Never said anything. Never said hi to anybody or anything. Um, we shot, and then we brought him in for his scene, and he did it. He came in character, never broke character for the whole 20 days or whatever, and went home in character. And literally half the way through, I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, is this guy really crazy? Like, are we really crazy? Are we okay? Is, is everything? Is we're like, everyone so safe? We've got to keep going. We, we've got to keep going. That and is then, hilarious. Um, at the world premiere in Orlando, the, and Jessica was really terrified of him. And I think she still is a little. 
but <laughs> she was like legit scared. Like there was no acting there. In in Orlando, he walks up to her, and it, as he's walking up, she's, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> but he walks up, holds out his hand, shakes her hand, says, "Hi, I'm Dave. We haven't met." And then he was just like the nicest person you've ever met after that. Wow. Wow. Well, but he just never broke. People, everybody was wondering about him the whole time. Like, like, I'm telling you. Are we, are we safe? He, you know, that he definitely was challenging some Heath Ledger then because, like, everybody, my understanding is all the people who, who acted with him on The Dark Knight uh, said, I, I, I'm trying to remember who it was. I've, it may have been Christian Bell said of him, I've never met Heath Ledger, I've only met the Joker. Mm, uh, yeah and 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 one of them said that about it but that so he maybe he was channeling a little bit of that he definitely brought a, a depth mm. uh to to the sure. film uh that it was yeah and i always have to be super careful because i don't want to spoil anything and we want people to go watch the film but yeah. he his his character was was very complex and for guys you know i feel like um push push us guys if we watch it to reflect and ask ourselves which to be honest i got i got questions for pastor zach you know <laughs> anyway you know what i'm saying i'm like homeboy you know what i'm saying uh, but but i got some questions for him anyway but but it pushed us to ask ourselves questions like well man how would we respond to that situation what you know what would we do that's uh because that, oh i'd have punched home on the throat even over <laughs> even like <laughs> No, day Sorry. one. <laughs> Same one. Sorry, John's buddy. like drowning him in the hot tub. Exactly. <laughs> I had someone, this really nice couple, older couple, and um, really sweet people, and they saw it. And um, and for one thing, I didn't think older folks were going yeah. to enjoy it, but older people, folks have just loved it. But he came up, and the first thing he said was, "I just shot him between the eyes in the hot tub." He exactly. Was like, <laughs> End of the movie. <laughs> movie I got thirty-five my seconds. Carry. <laughs> thirty-five. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. <laughs> thirty-five second movie. Boom! <laughs> you in the hot tub, my wife. Bam! Just <laughs> fucking homicide. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I want to. I want to hit the pause on the movie, and okay. we'll come sure. back. You see what I did there? You see what uh, I yeah. did? I hit no. the pause on the movie. Man, this is what, that's what I got to deal with, George. Day in and day out with this guy. <laughs> this <is> cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come, we're gonna come back to that so you started with an eight mil camera no film and what i think is super cool about that is is it's another example uh, of how how god takes something small a seed and yeah. and grows it in, into something and and it's so cool as we as we talk to different guys on here george and and spend time with them it's so amazing to see at different points in their life, how God was walking them towards this, this thing, this, this particular path that they, they came to. But for you growing up, we all, we all have uh, people that we look to as heroes, things like that. What directors were a big influence to you? Was there anybody that you were like, Oh my gosh, if I can make movies, that's what I want to do right there. I wish I could tell you something unexpected right now. It's gotta be George Lucas. I'm so sorry. I'm like everybody else. <laughs> it's okay. It was George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. I mean, they were the guys. I was such a Star Wars fan mm. growing up, man. I was just, <clears throat> I had, I had like every action figure, like three Ewok villages. And four yes. million like my whole closet was just floor to ceiling Star Wars. I was obsessed. Yeah. So we have some interesting questions for you then, because literally before uh, the show, when John and I were just chatting, we are, Star Wars fans ourselves. We're also okay. big fans of Lord of the Rings. Uh, we were having a discussion about uh, the rise of Skywalker. Now, see, for me, I told him my favorite part of the entire movie, and this is going to show what a nerd I am, was when the Armada showed up. And it wasn't because an Armada showed up. It was because if you look close, you see the ship from Star Wars Rebels within the fleet. So there's like this plausible deniability, if you will, that like, you know, they're part of the story. And there's even a ship that looks like the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian. So I like, that's a real nerd moment for me. I'm like, yeah, like tying it all together, man. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. But what, in, in your opinion, if we can ask, I don't know, it may be a professional thing you can't answer. I don't know. But like, 
how did you feel about this new trilogy versus the middle trilogy? Do you feel like they, they book in and tie things up? Okay. Or did it disappoint you? I will answer that question by saying I haven't seen rise of Skywalker. I'm sorry. Mm. Podcast is over. I'm sorry. Is, got, now, got, is that yeah, an answer? I just, I just spoiled the movie for him. Like, great. I'm, we have no, a filmmaker um, on the podcast and I spoil the end movie of his favorite. No, series. no, you didn't. And, and I loved, I loved all of the other ones and I've seen all the other ones. Um, I don't know. They just kind of lost me there on the, uh, the, um, what was the, the last the Jedi, last. last Jedi. Yeah. Like, See, Last Jedi, like, Last Jedi made me mad. Because when, yeah. when, when, I mean, that was like, you got, you got, um, you know, Mark Hamill showing back up, man. You got like, oh, this is my childhood relived. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And he just throws the lights everywhere. I'm like, what did you do? You just, you just shot Pepo. What's wrong with literally you? Literally just you? threw <laughs> millions of people's childhood in the trash. You just yes. like. And and then that's the thing. But I will like I do like what JJ did in the th- in the Rise of Skywalker. He threw a lot of shade. You mean the Rise of Palpatine? Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's gone, whatever. <laughs> he threw some shade at old boy that did the Last Jedi. He was like everything oh, that. Oh yeah, because he was everything that old boy tried to like undo. JJ was like, let me go fix that. Let me fix he this. Did. Oh, that's encouraging. Okay, yeah. okay. So I, I'll have to I, I would say watch it. It's it's worth a watch just for that alone because there was definitely some shade being thrown, which was pretty oh. hilarious. Mm. Okay, they would. Um, JJ goes back and tries to like let me fix this, you know, train wreck that this other guy did. Um, and so it was it was it was watchable. Like I liked it. Okay. Anthony's like I hate it, but I liked it. Like, um. Well, here, here's why I don't like it. And I know we're, we are chasing rabbits now. Uh-huh. That's what we do. It's, it's the equivalent. Here's, and this, uh, this will relate right to George's movie. Um, it is the equivalent of watching the whole movie. And there, you, George is building this character up, this neighbor as who he is. Yeah. And then at the very end, you find out actually the bad guy is really the mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the same thing. It is literally the same thing. <laughs> I think you got way too much invested in this, Anthony. You got way too much invested in this, man. I'm well, saying, I do, man. Like, every, I mean, every, every, I kind of feel the same way, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I found I remember the moment I found a Luke Skywalker action figure lying in the yard. My mom, you know, this is back in the the late seventies. My mom got her hair cut at this lady's house in our neighborhood. That this lady had a little brick shop behind her house. And my, I still remember what that place smelled like that smell of hairspray, you know, that bouffant hair, you know, that you know, Aquanet like, you know, 1979 yes, destroyed the ozone layer. <laughs> uh, and I remember walking around out in the yard while, while mom was getting her hair done. And this lady had a son who's a little bit older than I was. And I found a Luke Skywalker action figure in the yard. And you stole and, that joker from this that, no, that kid's. No, I walked. No, I knew better because my mama had done lit me up over some daggum Tootsie Rolls. So I, that's a whole other story. But I walked in and I was like, I showed it to her. I was like, hey, I found this. Can I have it? And she's like, well, he's got several of those. Yeah, you can have that. And that was my first Star Wars action figure. I was wow. hooked. Wow. So, so yeah, I was vested. Right, had you man. seen it at that point? Had you seen the movie? I, no, I hadn't even seen it at that point. I, I hadn't even seen it at that point. I, I didn't see it until like years later. I basically, the first one I saw, saw was Empire Strikes Back. Oh, okay. And, uh, like, and, and, and my cousins, movie. my cousin spoiled that for me. He was like, Darth Vader, he's Luke's daddy. <laughs> like, no, he's not. <laughs> That's impossible. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. Kick. No. Exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, we digress. quick question uh because talking about you know the, the the eight millimeter the, the indie film and those kind of things mm-hmm. there there seem to be like people that 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 are like you know your mainstream film consumers like me i mean i, I don't really watch a few indie indie movies there was um one i watched back with ben kingsley back in the the early 2000s called house of shadow and fog or house of sand and fog and it was like an indie artsy movie. And I just was like, what in the world? 
Uh, but in that realm, you have some, some really people that, that stand out and kind of explode from that. And in my world, um, Kevin Smith would be one of those guys sure. that, that just took a, a no budget whatsoever, just filmed it and it exploded, you know, clerks exploded and, and made it a whole lot of things. And, you know, I don't agree with everything that, that Kevin Smith does, but I mean, he's a, he's a, a, a likable guy. And, and yeah. his, his movies can be fairly relatable to a certain group of people. Um, and then, like, uh, the other um, indie one that I feel like to me, uh, uh, Blair Witch. That was it. Blair, Blair Witch. Project, yeah. ah, that was, the, like, the next one. That hit me. I was like, okay, this is extremely low budget, but very impactful. Like, so how do you think, like, in, in film, like, what does it take or what have you seen, like, to that – would say these are the key components of, of having not a lot of budget, but actually making a really good impactful film that can break through that indie to mainstream barrier. Yeah, that's, that's the million dollar question. Uh, I think there are a lot of factors, but I think the one that it kind of always comes back to is script. You know, um, they, you don't need a big budget to have a script and trust me, make a low budget movie and people will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know the, the story's got to be right um i think i think spielberg actually um in his first early movies cast kind of you know newer actors mm. and he had made a statement we don't cast stars in our movies and i think tom hanks called him out on that later but um i kind of always felt that way too i kind of mm. i i if i wasn't a director i'd probably be a casting director just because i, I kind of have an eye for talent and i love yeah. finding new talent so that's always been my thing um, but one thing, w once you make your film and you want to get it distributed, mm. you will find that having recognizable talent opens a lot of doors that you just mm. can't get open, you know, mm. without. So, um, talent is big, mm -hmm. uh, but now like some of these movies, you know, Blair Witch and some of these other ones, they'll do it. And even the Kendrick brothers, you know, with, mm. with some of their movies that they did, the, uh, facing the giants and mm, yeah. some of those, um, the story, story, you know, if you, if you got a story that people connect with. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's where it begins. And that kind of goes into something I was kind of wanted to talk about. You kind of mentioned the, um, uh, the facing the giants, that whole, uh, filmmaking crew there. Um, yeah. in the, in the, in the Christian realm, like there seems to be like this, like this, um, niche that all Christian movies kind of follow this pattern that everything, they all kind of follow this, the same thing. Um, which is I have great. no idea it's what good. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's great. It's good. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, 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 it's a tried and true thing for, for now that we have the actual, exactly, we have a Christian-based movies that's, you know, that we can actually watch. And, and, um, yeah. But there's this thing I, I really was intrigued and, and when Thy Neighbor came out, this is almost like a game shift in the Christian, music, uh, oh, Christian yeah. movie genre. Like this yeah. is now we're starting to see, we're, I, I'm not going to spoil it, uh, but we're going to see some, like some things that we haven't seen in most Christian movies. This yeah. is not your youth pastor cop out Wednesday night movie. <laughs> no. You guys know um, what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but it was inspired This is not the movie you put on for the youth group and show them so you don't have to teach. Really? <laughs> Great. Uh, <laughs> John looked at me and he's like, what is he saying? It took a minute for that to register. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's just kind of the thing. Um, I feel like for me, movies have always been a calling, you know, even before the eight millimeter camera, when I was a kid, um, my mom tells me stories and I do remember it. I would take action figures and like climb under a chair and like make little movies, you know, when I couldn't even talk. And then, uh, just when I had friends over with all our Star Wars guys, we'd be, I'd be like, let's play Star Wars. And I'd throw a blanket on the floor and it'd make all these caves and stuff. And I'd play and they'd always just sit and watch. And I'm like, play with me. And they're like, no, we just want to see your story. So I'd like, it's, so it's always been about stories for me. It's just, I've always felt, you know, kind of called to, you know, share stories. And um, the biggest one I had done as of 2009 was Homeless for the Holidays. That was the one that really kind of popped for mm -hmm. me. And, um, we got all these, you know, reviews and comments. They released it to all the, the faith-based market first. Mm. <laughs> and oh, everybody's loving it. And I'm like, oh, this is so great. We did something so great. And then it was uh, a recommended movie on Hulu and Amazon. And people beyond the faith-based audience saw it. 
and I started getting some really mean, nasty comments. <laughs> and I thought, what? Wait, I thought <laughs> one person loved a movie. Everyone loved that movie, right? Isn't that how this works? And so um, it just kind of, it, it caused me to kind of uh, sit back and reevaluate um, my game plan as a storyteller. And I was like, there is no shortage of good quality, entertaining movies for Christians who want to see, you know, homeless for the holidays or facing the giants or fireproof. There's that genre is really well taken care of. And then I thought, what about, you know, I play hockey with my son and we're, you know, in the locker room, none of these guys are going to be watching homeless for the holidays. <laughs> and I'm like, so who's, who's making Christian movies for people who don't like Christian movies. Yeah, and, good. um, I just, that just started becoming my conviction. And I thought, well, how do you make a Christian movie for somebody who doesn't like Christian movies? Because there's only one way to make Christian movies. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, you know, I just started kicking around this idea um, for thy neighbor and got the script written. And I was like, this is like one of the best scripts I'd ever written at that point, but there's no way I'm ever making this movie because mm. this will be the career killer. <laughs> just like, it's suicide. So I put it on the shelf and I wrote another movie and it was cute. It was a, uh, you know, talking dog family movie. It was going to be mm. great. Um, things were coming together for that. And then they started to fall apart. Mm. And I just felt like God was saying, Hey, what about thy neighbor? And mm. I took it out and read it again. And I was like, man, I forgot how good this is, but there's no way I'm making this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this went you're on like for Jonah movie. you were running you were here yes running. you got that you got that right yes this movie came from the belly of the whale <laughs> this was a, this where the where, where the creep neighbor next door came from that, that's where that that's explains where a lot spot. about home he, he was in there I, I met him in the belly <laughs> <laughs> hanging out in Sheol that's where he's at yeah. <laughs> so so um yeah, I just uh, for I wrote probably two or three different films and just kept you know God this one is just just like homeless for the holidays it'll be great and um, I just couldn't get past this conviction for my neighbor so I was like okay we'll get it made I'll sell the script so I contacted a production company I was like I can't make this because I'm known as the you know the happy <laughs> movie guy so would you guys make it and they read it and they're like whoa. Like I think they had one or two movies like in production. They're like, we'll pause everything. We're going to go straight into this. And I was like, huh, there it is. God, it got made. And he said, no, you make it. Oh, I was wow. Like, oh. I was like, I can't. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just did not want to do it. And um, so I had to call the production company and kind of cut that thing off. And yeah. so I talked to my wife and I was like, what do you, what do you think? And she's like, if God's calling us to do it, why, why are we wasting our time doing anything else? No, it doesn't things don't have to make sense to us if we know God's calling us to do it, just do it. So we sold our house <laughs> to fund it. You know, that was part of the funding wow. for it. Wow. And um, we actually the, the neighbor's house, that was mm -hmm. where we lived for three years. Because turns out if you don't have a regular job and you're just doing this, you you have to like be in business for three years before a bank will loan you money. So uh, yeah. find that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that was all kinds of years we, lived we give them guy life. stuff, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, we we had sold the house, um, and we we were selling it anyway because we had moved. But then it was like, okay, do we use this money for a new house, or do we use this toward making this movie? And we just, you know, obviously we're like, we got to do it. Mm -hmm. So we used it for the movie, and then you know, uh, other funds as well. We self funded the whole thing. That's awesome. And. Um, yeah, we, we started having auditions and it was not like Homeless for the Holidays. When we had Homeless for the Holidays, we announced auditions and like a thousand people showed up. Mm. And, you know, we'd go to locations and be like, here's the store. And they're like, yeah, yeah, use this, this. And so I'm thinking, I need a big church who's going to let me shoot <laughs> <laughs> this, this movie. <laughs> and so I, I contacted a couple of, and they're like, oh, yeah, Homeless for the Holidays guy. Yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, First, is, I want you to read the script. This is not <laughs> homeless for the holidays. <laughs> Please no. read the script first. And they read the script and they're like, um, I'm so sorry, but I don't think we can do this. And I'm like, I, oh, I completely get it. They, you, that's exactly what I expected. And then this one church was crazy enough to let us shoot the movie in there. And um, just a really cool pastor with just, he's got a heart for, and not that the other ones don't, but he, he has a real heart for reaching the lost and, you know, being a part of stuff like this. So. We got that amazing church. We shot that and um, assembled, like I say, you know, this outstanding cast. 
you yeah. know, which, you know, a, a lot of them, you, some of them you've heard of, you know, Amy Sutherland and Nathan Clarkson. And, um, Jessica Colonian, you will definitely be hearing more and more of. She's incredibly talented. And Dave Payton, of course, the guy that everybody just wants to get away from because he's terrifying. <laughs> but, That's my boy, man. I'm sorry. Like, I got I to, gotta, like, me and him got to hang out and, like, shoot cats you, or something. I mean, whatever. You, you <laughs> could. He's you totally weekend. hang out. He's, he's the coolest guy. So it, it, it's funny. When you see his real personality, you're like, how did you even pull that off? But he just somehow got into that place. But, yeah, so then we released it. <clears throat> and I thought, okay, I, you know, you, as you edit, you see it a hundred times. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this is – a Christian movie. <laughs> like, how's this going to go over? So I sent it to a distributor friend of mine and he's like, he's like, I love the movie. Actually a couple of them. And they're like, we love this movie. Great. But definitely not for our wheelhouse. <laughs> we, we don't, we don't know what we're going to do with this one. And I'm like, okay, I completely get it. So I thought I'll enter it in a film festival and just see, you know, if people are ready for something like this. Mm -hmm. And I entered it in the uh, international Christian film festival down in Orlando. And it got nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, oh. um, and Best Supporting Actress, and actually won Best Supporting Actress. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. So I'll enter it in one or two more film festivals. And yeah. now it's, I think it's got 100 laurels, so nominations, wins, and selections from all over the world. And so it's been really cool, um, a real growth experience for me because, you know, it's, it's kind of a tricky industry and a lot of people kind of want to play it safe. And I kind of cut that anchor loose a long time ago. And I just, if, if God says do it, I'm like, cool, let's, let's go do something unique. Yeah. And um, it was cool to see because distributors, um, distributors and like the stores and stuff, and I don't fault them at all for this. They don't want to let a lot of that in because they've got their proven stuff that sells and everybody has a family to feed. Right. Mm, yeah. And so I, I learned through this experience that it's not that nobody wants to see something a little different. It's just like, it's not getting to them yet. Right. <laughs> you, know, you create something like thy neighbor and it's like, Poof, and it only gets so far. Um, <clears throat> right now we're primarily um, selling it in the Christian market. And I'm like, guys, it was, it was not made for the Christian. I don't want some, you know, grandma, to get this, not expecting it, and see it and say, what did, what just happened? I said, this is, it's, it's you got to treat it like a secular movie. Right? Yeah. And we, we put it on Tubi. Are you familiar with Tubi? It's kind of, yeah. actually bigger than Netflix now. It's like the world's biggest streaming network. Mm -hmm. I think. Really? Uh, I think, yeah. I can um, get it here, man. <laughs> Oh, sorry, man. It's awesome. But uh, it was, it made like seven top lists on there. One of them was most popular. And then like cool. best thriller, wow. best thriller, best horror, and best faith base. That's awesome. So that's, wow. That's interesting. Like you see the best horror list in all the movies next to it. And then yeah. best faith. Like, how is this fitting in with, with these movies? But um, it's just, it's, it's one of those things. Sometimes God calls you to do something that doesn't make any sense. Mm. It's terrifying. You're like, I don't know about this, but yeah. then you do it. And it's just cool to see him open doors and do things that you would have never expected. Yeah. from your other, what, your other work. what you've done. I mean, essentially uh, is, through film fulfill the great commission you've you've gone to where people are and and using a genre of film that you know people don't i mean like I, I, it's the first christian thriller i mean right i mean like I, right. has anybody else, i don't think anybody's done this no you know I mean, I don't the think Evil Dead had a documentary had a, into the spear, right? Yeah. I, I mean, like, I don't right. think Evil Dead had a had a uh, had like a Christian yeah. theme on it, and I don't think he was like, yeah. a, <laughs> no, no. It, it's so it's really it's fascinating because one of the things I love uh, is how you 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 explored some of the um, what I would call the plastic veneer hmm. uh, that is so common in the American church and. You know, Pastor Zach, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, is his, his character, uh, I felt like you did a good job of, of, of creating this person that I feel like we all kind of know. Mm. And at times, some of us have, in honest, all honestly, probably been guilty of being. Yeah. And, and the, the, the first time he, he walked in, he was like, oh, I'm doing a series and on my book. I was like, I want to punch Pastor Zach in the throat. I was like, just... <laughs> You punch a lot of people in the throat. I mean, I, I won't. Well, do, I don't do it. That's what he does for a living. I so. mean, that is that is my job. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. My, Clarkson's a stand-up guy. Yeah, but with well, a ministry I, to men as well. But <laughs> I digress. I'm sorry. 
just <laughs> another good actor uh, <laughs> lying his trade. Uh, I am curious though, did, did that character, as you developed uh, Pastor Zach, uh, was he like an amalgamation of different people that you've known or was he, or do, were you thinking of somebody without getting you in a lot of trouble? Uh, you know, you know. What's your home church pastor's name? <laughs> Pastor Mac, Pastor Mac. <laughs> no, it was not my pastor. Um, pastor's a great guy, but um, I've worked in ministry for a lot of years. And so I've met a lot of people in ministry television for about 10 years. So you meet uh, a lot of people and, um, and, you know, I've been a Christian since I was five. So, I mean, I just, I've, I've grown up in the church and, you know, I think, I think you're onto something there. Um, I think partially myself, just flaws that I found in myself, mm -hmm. um, just wanting to make sure that I look perfect so that I represent God perfectly. You know what I'm saying? And so sometimes you, you put up barriers, you know, to a certain extent. And then just also, um, you know, I, I certainly can't call out names or anything because, you know, just I don't want to hurt anybody. But you just, you know, I've, I've run into situations where it's, you know, I, I feel like, and, you know, we're always more gentle on ourselves, I suppose. I feel like when I've acted in some of those ways, it was more innocent. I wasn't trying to. But I feel like... Um, I've met some people along the way who have almost um, perfected it as an art. And it's like, they've yeah. actually accepted that as a cloak, you know, that, that mm. persona. And so um, I feel bad for them um, because it's, it's hard to really live and experience life. You know, when you're so busy kind of putting on, a show all the time you know what I'm saying and so and uh, it, it wasn't it's not a malicious thing it's not like I'm upset with people or mad at people um, it just it's something I've seen a lot and I thought it'd be fun to give someone the opportunity to be broken from that you yeah. had mentioned before yeah that's there's a lot of um, subtle things in the movie and we can get into some of that if you want um, oh, absolutely let's dig deep that. brother the mask. Um, did, you, did you notice the mask? Oh yes. The yeah, at the yeah, end? yeah, that was that was that was a good. I was like, mm, there it is. And that's something I want to <laughs> yeah. talk about too. That I was I'll go and connect, connect to it, and then you come back to to Anthony's thing because yeah, that yeah. connects that ending part of it. I don't want to give the ending away, but there's that part where um, the character is uh, working at this other place, uh, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, and he and he meets the guy. That he talks to at the end there. Um, I've just I, that hit me really, really hard because uh, I've seen so many uh, people, uh, ministry people, get burnt out, get hurt, get you know, just like, like I said, fall or whatever it is, and then they they go and start doing something else, and and like they're literally like I I, I used to work for uh, for Nissan for a, a, a car manufacturing plant for five years or so. And I literally still have nightmares about going to work back at that place. Um, if, you know, if this was to, you know, run off the rails, um, what we're doing now, but it's, it's one of those things where it, that was something that hit me really hard um, at the end there. Like, man, like that, that, you know, what, what after ministry, like, okay, what, you know, what if this doesn't turn out like you think it's going to turn out and you're back and, and that, that second chance that, 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 okay, God's going to bring you out of that brokenness to, to, to restore you, Lord willing, you know, kind of thing. So that was something for me that really hit hard and kind of connected with that mass part of it, that redemption and those kind of things. But anyway, I wanted to do that before my brain jumped the rails and I forgot about it. Uh, no worries. No, that's awesome. That's, that's very cool. Very cool. And, and honestly, you know, I've, I've experienced a lot of the emotions that Pastor Zach went through and that place is one of them. You know, I've, I feel like I've been in that place before, too, where I, probably right after Homeless for the Holidays. I'm like, I mm. failed everybody. You know, the, the people I was trying to reach, you know, I, I sang well to the choir, but everybody else, you know, they didn't like it. And so it, mm. it's it's uh, I think we all find ourselves in a similar place to that at times. But it's and then, you know, just like happened in the movie, God sends somebody or he comes and whispers in your ear himself and says, no, we're not done yet. Let's let's get up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a very vulnerable, you know, what, what you do is a very vulnerable yeah. thing. You know, it, it takes a, a lot of vulnerability to, to write a script and, and prepare this. I mean, that's your soul. It's your heart. You're putting out there 
And, and like you said, you know, not everybody's going to be nice. John and I even joke. We're like, we're waiting for the day. We actually feel like we've arrived when there's a different YouTube channel that talks about why heretics we are. Um, <laughs> exactly. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm but, not. I'm like, I'm like, this is well, great. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But, but, but in all seriousness. I want some fundamental Baptists to start throwing stuff at me. That's what I want. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I actually, a lot of, there were elements in, in Pastor Zach that resonated with me. Uh, as if you've listened to any of the podcasts, you've heard me p- possibly talk about, you know, I used to wrestle with a lot of anger yeah. and, and God is delivering, you know, I, I say he's delivering me daily. I, I don't think it's ever safe to say, well, I've been delivered of that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, yeah. um, here's how in 10 easy steps. And, and I, I like, I almost, I like, that you almost in a sense kind of called that out in us to, to, to remind us guys, yes, God delivers you. He can move you into a, a position where you're able to influence a lot of people, but bro, man, you better be careful because <laughs> yeah. the moment you think you stand, go pow. Yeah. Right? And, and that's, that's, you know, a lot of, you know, what I saw with his character was that danger of, you know, throughout the movie, I really never saw any accountability in his life. <laughs> you know, it was, it was very much, I'm hired pastor Zach. I'm here to solve your problems. <laughs> right. You know, and, and when, when, you know, reality came knocking, he was on a faulty foundation because he'd not surrounded himself with that accountability. I mean, let's just be honest, man. Like, like the first time something happened where the secretary put his hand on his arm, you know, somebody should have been like, bro, man, <laughs> You know, say somebody should have pulled him in a room and jerked a knot in him. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> oh, saying. oh man, I'm, I'm I'm saying there there was a there was a point, and this is when 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 the the the, the actress is talking down to her son like, "Hey, get up here," and that little Joker said, "Hang on." I was like, "No, nah, not in my house, no." Nah. I was whooping this child all up down there. Uh-uh. Like, like, Hold on, creepy man! <laughs> like, I gotta go down there and whoop my child. Hide like, part. Mm-hmm. Then we can get back to business. So. <laughs> exactly. That's there's there are several uh, moments when we do these theatrical screenings and festivals. There are a few moments where you can pretty much anticipate people are going to start screaming at the screen, and that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what is wrong with you? But again, what you going to do? Go downstairs because then he closes the door, and they're both stuck. Yeah. So it's like, that, well, not, that, what do you do? I'm talking about at the house before he ever got down oh. there, there. I'm like just whooping that, like no. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, that, that was that was a little of my southern hair just coming out. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 so I I I almost. Uh, you know, there were a couple of things too. Like I loved the, uh, the, the, and again, I have to be careful. I don't want to give things away, but when, when God brings this gentleman into his pastor Zach's life towards the end of the movie that, you know, you can uh, see that the restoration is beginning. God's brought this person into his life and, you know, he's got the, the teardrops each representing a, a life that he's taken himself uh, a lot, lot of, a lot of subtext there that I thought was really nice. I, I has, have you considered? I'm just curious because I'm curious. Have you considered a a sequel to this film that follows Pastor Zach and what's next for him, mm-hmm. um, or maybe even a prequel for this gentleman we met at the table? Well, I, I've never spoken publicly of it. <clears throat> oh, scoop, scoop time. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. We have we have entertained the idea of a miniseries prequel. Wow. Where we see his childhood a little bit and we see how he sort of became who he is, a little more focused on the neighbor. Mm. Mm. And um one of the things we we're considering if that should happen is opening scene first episode um the neighbor is in prison with Jonas. Oh, so the, that's tight. That's, yeah. Mm. And yeah. And they, they get to know each other and Jonas wants to get him saved because Jonas has learned and he's just not hearing it. And then he gets out and that's why Jonas comes to comfort him at the end. Cause he's like, I knew this guy, I couldn't get him saved. Mm. And now look at the mess that's been created. So that's just a little taste of, uh, 
some thoughts that we've had on a, a but just to throw story. throw a bug in your ear have him in prison for killing cats that'd be good that'd be what i'm saying <laughs> <There you> <laughs> <go>. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Every 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 weirdo <laughs> psycho guy's got like seventy five cats in the backyard dead. I mean, have you not I, watched? I will say, well, there are studies I, that show that a lot of serial killers start with animals. You're right, but I will tell you this: um, there, the the son Alex in the original script yeah. did have a puppy, <laughs> but we decided that was too much. Oh no, that, that would have been oh that would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, spoiler alert. That's when we realized. John, John has not read my book yet. A cat does, in fact, die in my book. <laughs> but getting hit by you like a 1973 it. Chevy or 34 Chevy does not count as somebody, some psycho in the backyard doing some weird stuff. That ain't how it happens. All right. That ain't how it happens. I'll just tell you that. You don't have to read the book, John. <laughs> but that ain't how it happens. <laughs> So back to your uh, back to your point on the Jonas scene. Yeah. One thing I wanted to show there too. Um, you had mentioned the teardrops, and here's this guy who's been in and out of prison. Um, Pastor Zach's idea of Christianity and of being a Christian leader was: I have to either be perfect or make sure that I look perfect. Mm. And that was, that was his struggle. And then that, when the mask broke, that was shattered. He felt like he had nothing now because mm. I'm not perfect. I failed. Mm. And so God sent somebody who had failed worse that was actually able to speak life back into him. Mm. You saw you don't, you don't have to be perfect. You know, that that God uses people, you know, from all walks of life. Mm. That's that, that that was a really good point that, that, that pulled out of there. That was really, yeah, it was just a really, really good connection point uh, at the end there and tied up really, really well. Uh, to yeah. even just the things that he even said specifically was really, really good. Yeah. Well, yeah, cool. guys in general, it, it, you, you, um, you said something earlier that caught my attention. You talked about um, Pastor Zach's armor. You know, he, he essentially this persona that he made for himself was his armor. Guys, we're, we're guilty of that so often. And, and it comes in different forms. You know, for some mm-hmm. guys, they use anger as their armor. Some will use this plastic, Mm. you know, perfection, you know, uh, and others will use even the, the tough guy, you know, I'm, I'm a tough guy. Uh, you know, nothing can touch me, you know, you know, that, that kind of attitude. And we, we will get so much further and, and, and have so much more impact on our families in a positive way on the calls for the cause of Christ. If we'll be honest and vulnerable. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, I think, you know, this, this film challenges guys too to explore too. Uh, there are some, you know, situations, what, what do you do? You know, what do you do in a situation where this type of person is potentially, you know, threatening your family? I mean, there's a decision point, you know, he has to come to what, what do I do? And, and so there, there's a lot of questions you're asking men, uh, to answer for themselves. And it's good that they're able to answer, ask if they, if they watch the film, right. And they'll reflect and ask themselves, what would I do? And they'll, they'll hopefully answer those questions before any crazy thing happens in their lives. Was that in your mind as you were, as you were writing that or a hundred percent. Um, and that's what, um, some people on the, you know, more on the distribution and releasing side, um, we're like, well, does it seem strange that things weren't kind of buttoned up? And I was like, that's completely intentional. Um, mm. I, I wanted to actually ask more questions than I answered with the mm. movie because I remember seeing a movie probably back in the eighties when I was a kid. And, um, and I think it was more of an, uh, independent artsy type movie and it was like unique and they're, they're telling the story and I'm like figuring out what things are supposed to mean. And I'm like, Oh, this mm. is so great. This is so great. And then they explained it at the end. Mm. It was way dumb than what I was thinking. And I was like, oh, that's a huge letdown. And um, all of a sudden I realized, like, I made this movie uh, Dreamer. And I released it. And I had an idea in my head of what everything meant. It's, it's mm. all subtext. Yeah. But it's, I, I knew what everything meant. And the people came up to me afterwards. And they're like, oh, I love how this meant that. And I was like, that's way better than I, what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, was like, I was like, wait a minute. We don't all think the same. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I'm, I have more fun as a storyteller creating an environment mm. and then letting you experience it. 
Yeah, Instead of just true. telling your story, one plus one is two, two plus two is four. I, I just create a situation, create an environment, and then you experience it however you would experience it. That's that's the one thing. Like you know, it's it's a couple of movies that that have drawn me in like that and going think about at night and question going was that what happened there? Why that happened there? And two of them, uh, two of them was. Total Recall, like that's my you know, thing there back in the 80s. The original Total Recall, not not the stupid Colin Farrell one. The, the actual good one, right. Star Wars Singer. Um, yeah. But you go, all right, was, he, was this actually a dream? Was this part of the thing he was? Like, you don't really get an answer to it. And in the in Inception, the last part of Inception, where the, where the thing kind of wobbles, and you go, yes. wait, it's where is yeah. And so that leaving those open-ended questions, to me, it's frustrating because they never get an answer. Nobody was like, yep, this is what it is. Yeah. But it, it creates this thought, like thinking through it. And, 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 and I think it's why there's so much fan fiction out there. And like even on, uh, you know, fan theories out there on like Star Wars and all the other movies, uh, because it, it, there are people it, who make a good living just doing fan theories. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's a good, a good part of a storyteller is letting people figure things out on their own and letting people and even like even teaching, like, you know, when you're. Uh, leading a Bible study or leading somebody that walking through somebody, walking with somebody through letting them discover what is act the Bible saying versus just telling it to them and just memorize it, which is there's parts for both. But it just it, that that self discovery, even in in films, uh, seems to be a good thing and a, and a very helpful thing. And so, uh, yeah, I think it was uh, you know a good thing that it was left a little open, and you go, okay, well, what happens next? Like, what's the and it leaves you wanting to know what's going to happen next. And so that was good. I enjoyed that. And hopefully, hopefully then uh, it leaves you what happens next because it, hopefully you relate enough to the character, then it turns inward. Okay. What mm -hmm. happens next yeah. with me if yeah. I run into that? Um, and, and I think as a filmmaker, the way I approach storytelling now, um, which is very different from when I first started, but um, when I finish a movie and release it, it's not my movie. Mm. It's our movie. Mm, that's good. So every, I, I leave it open enough that we can kind of all contribute ideas and, you know, take things away from it and add things to it. And it just, it allows, um, I like to create a movie that everybody can experience differently. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then two people have a conversation about it. And it's like, Oh, I didn't see that. I saw this. And I just, I like leaving things open, create a, uh, an exciting enough experience for people, but let them be part, part storyteller in it too. You know, that's if, good. If, whether whether constructing what might have happened with the characters or look, looking internally and being like, Oof, what, what would I do if I came home from work and some weird dude was in the hot tub with my wife? You know, I, I know what I would do. That and the movie would have probably ended there too. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to push him. You know, I wanted to yeah. put him in some really uh, tough situations, and yeah. that was that was a good way to kick it off, I suppose. And one of the questions too, like, because this is another. Um, uh, first that I've seen in a Christian movie before, like you see husband and wife doing some husband and wife things. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, not like graphic. <laughs> it's, not, it's, right, not like, right, right. it's not like Game of Thrones, but it's like, but, right, you know, you right. but he some, addresses the fact that Christians do in fact have sex. Yeah. <laughs> and enjoy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that was something that kind yeah. of struck me. I was like, this is the first time I've really seen that portrayed. I yeah. maybe just you know not seen a lot of Christian movies, but that's the, the neighbor person. really saw it portrayed. If you know what I oh, mean. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think about that. That Joker did was watching that pervert. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. And, and honestly, it, you know that was that was nerve wracking too because I'm thinking, oh man, how's this going to be, you know, received in the in the and it's it, like you said, it's not anything too serious. It's they they sat in a hot tub and had a conversation. Yeah. Um. But um. And, you know, then they, I guess they kissed a little bit before their date too. They just, they, they were affectionate. They liked yeah. each other, but I kind of wanted to show that, you know, mm -hmm. Christians um, can have healthy relationships too with their spouses. Um, but again, it just came down to, I'm trying to make a movie for, you know, HBO. I'm not trying to make a movie for TBN. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of had to, you know, stay on track with that. Mm -hmm. And also my phone just told me I'm at 15%. So I might have to find a way to, uh, Looking mm -hmm. in. Oh, all right. All right. My assistant director is, is on it. Oh man. All right. Yes. We, we need a team. See, that's what happens when you get like you're a big, big level director. You get assistants. <laughs> right. You have people for that. We got children's <laughs> like this. Go get me a cup of water, please. I'm about to die. Um, throwing stuff <laughs> no. at kids walking in the door. <laughs> I, I, were, was there anything as, as you wrote the script, uh, 
was there anything that your uh, characters did that surprised you as you were writing? Yeah, I mean, the the whole thing, um, when I write, and I, I think this is partially why I feel like I'm called to this, um, I don't think I'm good enough to write most of what I've written. Um, I sit down, and a lot of times it's like, God lets me see the movie first, and I just write down what I saw. Mm. And um, I, I definitely think, here, like I said, I was terrified of the project for about five or six years, so I had lots of time for revisions. Every pass, it was like, okay, how can I make this bad guy worse? And obviously, I got to spend a lot of time on that because it worked out great. But there were some things, um, you know, I, the puppy, the stuff I didn't see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> finding a puppy in a black garbage bag in the backyard. And that was just before, but like when she's looking for Deleted her scene, deleted she scene. She found the dog first. And then it's like, and that's because originally you, yeah. you're supposed to kind of sort of not be sure if he's totally crazy or not. Um, it ended up being easier you to identify. You almost start to feel sorry for him, you know? Yeah. Was just, and that was the just... idea. But then, then, when she's looking for her son and finds the dog that kept barking at him and didn't like the neighbor, then you're like, Oh, he's crazy. And, and <laughs> where's the son? Right. Yeah. So that added to that intensity, but it's just too much. Yeah. Um, That's, <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think just in general, um, I mean, there were a lot of things um, during the writing process that, just you know you kind of let a story happen in front of you and yeah yeah i'm i'm experiencing it myself as as i'm writing it and so you know the hot tub scene was i think the first one that was way different than anything i'd ever people done people gonna go watch it now just because you said the hot tub scene <laughs> right right <laughs> guys that ever now what's the name of that movie what's the name <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it might not be what you're expecting. Exactly. Um, it, like I said, it's not Game of Thrones, but it's it's good. Um, the um yeah. the um the one thing that 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 got me too, like even with the 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 guy, and I keep going, I can't remember his name. Uh, and, the neighbor. Yeah, the neighbor. There you go, the neighbor. You never hear his name. It, did you know? You never hear it. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, see, was... I didn't want to say that because I'm like that's part like that's. Oh my bad, my bad. That's like a you know that was when I was like you know what you you did I, that get you? Yeah, that got me. I was like. Yeah, I, you know, because yeah. I was like taking notes and stuff when I'm watching it. I'm like the creep. The, and I was just, <laughs> it's only the, and it, so I was like, oh yeah, okay. Um, but there was a scene in the office where he's where they're they're talking back and forth, and that scene was like, like he that guy like like really pushed my buttons, you know, to to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And then and watching him do that and seeing like there were some little small things that started catching just on his appearance, like he wasn't shaven. And like, there's like wild hairs growing out of his neck and his head. And like, it wasn't kept at all. And it was like, yeah. it, and I don't know if it was intentional or if it was a character choice from, by him or whatever, but that was like little things. I was like, that was really cool to me. Like this, this having somebody, this, you know, he's a weirdo. He's not going to be, he's going to have weird hair and shave and, you know, and not shave in certain spots and, you know, and so anyway, yeah. that just, I'm, I'm stupid. So that kind of, you know, <laughs> that kinda, I, I love that. I love that. Did you did you notice um, when Pastor Zach got up to preach <clears throat> his first message? He was all neatly pressed and perfect on the front, and then when it showed him from behind, he was all wrinkly, all wrinkled. Back, yeah, all I the flaws. That, he could he, he yeah. couldn't see his flaws. Yeah. It was it was all on the back. I'm so his presentation side that. was perfect. And he yeah. was a hair boy. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Zach was a hair boy. I know you ain't <laughs> talking about some hair, Anthony. I'm saying, well, I'm saying, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm some God created me to be, John. I can't help it. If well, Zach, maybe just try to live his best life now or something. Aren't you trying to mess with Zach's head? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I think he was. He definitely yeah, trying definitely. to live his best life now. <laughs> um, one thing I, I did want to say, too, I wanted to, to, to say awesome job on. The, 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 the filming, like the, the actual scene shots and, the, and the, the camera angles and all that was yeah. like – very beautiful. Like it was really well shot. Like just the cinematography of it was, I mean, it, that's what caught me. Like the first couple scenes was just how well this was shot. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You, you used some drones, right? Did you use some drones in there to get some of that footage? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So a awesome. drone, drone guy named Matt Murray, who's awesome. He's worked for me on a few projects. And then um, Reed Petro was the director of photography and he was just, he was amazing. He's, he's, and he's even better now. He's just, he's going to be a big movie DP, I'm sure. 
That's wow. it was. Uh, but where did you find a 1998 spider at though to film? That's what I was looking for. Like, like John's been waiting to ask you that question. Yeah, that, that's a joke called Anthony. I was like, first question I'm gonna ask is joking. Where do you find a a late models ninety late ninety models spider? Like, cause I love that car. My garage. Oh, really? <laughs> really? My wife and I, we got married. We went down to Florida and um, we didn't have a lot of money, but we, we decided to go big. Or I guess it wasn't, it wasn't our honeymoon. It was just uh, after we'd been married for a few years, we wanted to take a trip down to Florida and we rented one of those. And we're like, this is the coolest car ever. We just had such a blast in it. So when, you know, a few, few years later, we were able to actually get one. We went back and got the old 2002 model, the same one that we had had. Nice. <laughs> on that that's trip awesome. it was just kind of a cool thing for us it just reminded us of that trip that's cool that's cool, that's cool. Well, was, there, that was a there, burning question in my heart so thanks for answering that <laughs> were there other little nuances in the movie that were like nods to your wife like like bits and pieces that you kind of oh man snuck in there the you kind of you kind of catching me on the spot that's a great question and if it wasn't early i probably could <laughs> think, what do you think? Oh, well, yeah, we're talking about thy neighbor, though. Um, oh, which was that? Wait, she, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't mean no, to get throw it up on me. Throw it in there. <laughs> I have to say it right because she's sitting right there. Exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's sitting over there with that gun. <laughs> like, just like sitting there waiting. you like, what'd you say, boy? What? <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, a lot of the characteristics, hmm. the good characteristics in her did actually come from my wife. I, I got lucky. I married, I married up in got a really good wife who's been really supportive because this industry and me just as a person can be really crazy sometimes I so completely understand yeah Punched so I, I, got, my way. I got blessed with a really patient person who probably until we made this movie would have opened the door <laughs> but I think, she's, I think she's better now <laughs> that's that's the thing my wife was like i'm not that gullible am i was like mm, you're pretty close. <laughs> i was like mm, you know, i don't think you'd be in the hot tub but you might be like, I won't even open the door for the Girl Scouts. Okay. <laughs> right. The Girl Scouts come to the door. And say, Who is it? <laughs> say it. Um, but shifting gears a little bit, I wanted a, a couple of questions to ask you because that, that Emmy back there is definitely for a, a secular work. Um, yeah. Like, what, what is the kind of the difference? Have you, like, I mean, uh, as, as much as you can, like what's the difference between like you feel from working in the, the secular world with film and working in, in, in a Christianized uh, version of, 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 of a film industry? Like what's the, what's, is there a difference? Is it just, just what you're shooting or like, how does it, how does that work? And how do you um, connect the two with, with uh, your, your strong beliefs as a Christian and also connect it into a world that's secular and not, that doesn't kind of share those same uh, beliefs and, and, and values? That is an excellent question. Um, first off, I primarily only do faith-based work. Right. Um, just my convictions, uh, there are some, I couldn't shoot an episode of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oddly enough, I don't think I can say. <laughs> I'm shooting something similar down the road, but, but faith-based, but crazy Ooh. epic. But that's, really? I'm, I'm, share, I'm sharing too much on your show. No, that's extras, all right, man. Extras right here. We're exactly. bearded dudes. Exactly. Exactly. I will be in a, I will be in a, I own several swords. I will fly. I will fly <laughs> bring to my, wherever you're filming this at, just so I can look like a hobbit. If I can look like a dwarf cool. or a perfect. hobbit, I'll be in it. <laughs> I've got my perfect, axe. Perfect. You ain't got to pay me. I'll just, just stand in the background and look. Just eat. I get to eat some of the food, the, the food for the crew. I'll be fine. I'm good. That's all I need. <laughs> you're in you're in yay you heard it you heard it all <laughs> heard our it four listeners you heard george johnson say i'm in this movie whatever whatever it is i'm not sure you didn't what it tell is. me i was in <laughs> <laughs> no you're both in you're gonna fight each other yes <laughs> that would be epic <laughs> that'd be a great so, episode of guy stuff doing guy stuff i'm just saying <laughs> Anyway, uh, sorry. So, no, I, I, I lost track. What, what was the question again? The, uh, we're, oh, we're oh talking combining. About the yeah. Yeah. Um, we do that I think the best part for me is that um, I get to be a Christian on both sides. Mm. You know, um, mm. being a Christian on a Christian movie where you're primarily surrounded by Christians is fun and it's, it's cool. Uh, but there's something kind of cool, too, about working with people who are not used to this culture and mm. not, they don't think the same way. And, um, almost invariably somebody comes up and is just like, well, what is wrong with you in mm. such a good way? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, why, 
you know, you're directing this video, but you did the dishes for everybody after lunch. And mm. it's just, you know, uh, just, just by trying to, you know, be godly, you know, on an, on a secular set, it's just kind of a, a cool way to connect with people, I guess. Um, but I don't go too far into the secular. I try to, um, bring God and bring me to any set that I come to in, in that, like, um, like with that video for the guess who, fortunately they were really cool guys. And so I actually wrote the concept for it wow. and said, you know, in, in, let's make this kind of a cool family friendly, like a tender music video. Mm. It was about, a, it was a song about he missed his mom, mm. you know, she passed away. So I said, let's kind of focus on a backstory of you and your mom, mm. you know, and some tender experiences from when you were a kid. And so, um, it's fun. It, like er, in my early days, I used to be like, Oh no, only Christian, only Christian projects and I still I'll, I'll only produce things that I can feel good about that you know I feel like I can I'll be okay watching with God in heaven someday yeah. um but I do enjoy being around some <laughs> yeah. some some people are just so fiery and loud and confrontational I don't enjoy that at yeah. all but I enjoy being around people from all backgrounds yeah. who are open and conversational and you know just want to you know chat I, I enjoy that yeah. Now somebody just, just wants to, it's like if they're hardened and it's just like, I must defeat you no matter what. That, that's no fun. Yeah. You know, they, it's good. but if you can have like a real conversation with people, I, I enjoy that. That's good. That's awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, I like what you said. The fact that you brought out the importance of wherever you go, you are a, a Christian. And, and I think that for a, a long time, I know at least for me growing up, the circles I was in, you know, Christian service looked like you were a pastor youth pastor, worship leader, or Christian day school teacher. <laughs> yeah. And that was pretty much it. And, yeah. and I love that, you know, you, you've broken that mold mm. and, and, you know, you can be a filmmaker and a good filmmaker and be a believer, but to our guys out there too, I would say, you know, take a lesson from George's life. Mm. Uh, he, he carries the gospel just with him. Mm. You know, if you're a welder, if you are a, a car mechanic, a car salesman, an insurance salesman, a dentist, a, a waiter, I don't care what you are, put Christian in front of that hmm. yeah, and, and, and carry Christ. Well, he's already in you. I mean, you carry him with you. I love the fact that you, you, you drew out that, you know, it's those little things like cleaning the dishes for the people on set. They're going to show them Jesus more than yelling and screaming at them about, your differences uh you're you're gonna you're you're gonna get farther I, I think you know than causing people to throw up that defensive wall is that general it's even your character in the movie that was there to be that piece of restoration for pastor zach in the end you know there was a gentleness that he was bringing to him it wasn't a fiery you know what's your problem kind of deal it was uh hey man i'm flawed I get it. This is what Jesus does with all people. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So um, if guys, if people want to see this movie, like and get in contact with you and follow your stuff, what would be a way they could do that? Uh, well, it's on Amazon. So you could see it on Amazon. You could see it on uh, Tubi. Okay. Um, and then um, if you want to get in touch, like we're getting ready now to start casting the next movie pulled from darkness. And if you go, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Let's just go to uh, homesickmedia.com and you can get on the mailing list there. And you know what we're doing that when this is over, right? Me and John both. We're going to like be on there oh. <laughs> getting the homesick.com. Like, Hey, <laughs> remember us? Oh, very <laughs> cool. Very cool. <laughs> sorry keep going so homesick.com and you can oh, sorry, George. Oh, yeah homesickmedia.com get in there um sign up for the mailing list and then all um casting notifications and everything will be sent out by email there Great, so man. that's that's the best way to do it. it it's just me as a person when somebody comes up to me and says hey how can i be in your movie which has happened for years uh, like, always, like we just did <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are in but, oh yeah so we, yeah, we already yeah. got it we good but, <laughs> I want a trailer. Do I, how do I get a trailer? With your people. Can, can, I, get a, hard, yes. can I get a trailer? It's, it's hard. What's that? Can I get a trailer? I want a trailer. They're going to send trailer. you to the storage trailer. <laughs> 80 footer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but it's it's hard, you know, because um, 
it was something I dealt with for a long time. People would come and, and some of them really look like, you know, they've got some experience and they might work for a part. But it's just, there's no way I don't have the memory to just remember everybody. So I came up with this spot on the website where you can sign up and then just, boof, when there's an opportunity, now you're included. So that, that's the best way for me to stay in touch with everybody. So if, you, if you're interested in acting or whatever, um, even crewing, um, sign up there. And then when opportunities um, arise, you're in the know and you can jump in and possibly be a part. So that's the best way to do it. That's great. So all the, all of our expiring actors and, and film guys out there in the guy stuff world, all three of you, um, like, Hey, if you want to get in the, uh, try your hand at the movies, this is the way you can do it and connect in with a Christian filmmaker and, and, um, and hopefully, you know, be the, 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 the next creepy guy in his next movie that like, like breaks out. Man. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and we do encourage you guys to, go and watch George's film. Uh, mm. You know, a lot of times we sit in theaters and we're quick to talk about what frustrates us, you know, what we don't see in films. And, you know, we, we spend a lot of time waxing eloquent about what's wrong with the film industry. Well, George is what's right. Mm. So, well, so support George, support filmmakers like him uh, who are not just telling Christian stories, but are telling good stories. And I think that George has, uh, uncapped something that mm. I, I believe will in the future is going to grow and you're going to see more and more films that are dealing with um and so i would encourage you guys su support it so that's your homework your guy stuff homework All is right. to get on amazon or tubi and and watch this film and then share it with a friend george thanks for hanging out with a couple of crazy guys and uh we appreciate you taking part of your Saturday to be with us and we're looking forward to seeing what's next. Uh, yeah. so you guys, you, you're going to love it. It's, it's a really good one coming up next. And, and thank you for thinking to have me on the show. You guys, it's been a real pleasure. You guys are awesome. Absolutely. Man, thank Glad you, brother. To have you. God bless you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on the guy stuff podcast. Thank you.